Welcome to the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for Thursday, October 8th. Over the next couple of days, we will have some breezy winds in the 20 to 30 mile per hour range over western and southern areas of the Great Basin and also up over parts of Wyoming through Friday. However, stronger winds are expected on Saturday as the cold front finally moves into the northern portion of the Great Basin. This will bring winds in excess of 40 miles per hour over western and northern Nevada and also up into southern and eastern Idaho and Wyoming. We'll continue to have breezy winds further south across the Great Basin, but the strongest winds will be ahead of the front. This is also where relative, humi relative humidity may still remain low before the cold front moves through improving conditions. Looking at our near-surface smoke forecast, we will continue to have smoke impacts from the fires in California with that southwest to west flow across much of western and northern Nevada and up into Idaho. Similar situation at 6,000 feet, again looking at the northern and western side of the Great Basin with much more clear conditions over the rest of southern and eastern areas. We've had no precipitation and lightning over the last 24 hours and light initial attack with just some new small fires reported across the Great Basin. Over the last seven days, we've had no precipitation, and the last two weeks, the only precipitation was up over central and eastern Idaho into Wyoming with a cold front that dropped down almost two weeks ago. Otherwise, extremely dry conditions and warm weather has continued across the Great Basin. This has allowed ERCs to remain very high for the time of year above the 90th to 97th percentile over much of Utah into southern and eastern Nevada and above the 80th to 90th percentile over western and northern areas. Even areas that saw wetting rains across central Idaho have recovered and are now between the 70th and 80th percentile. Looking at how some of these ERCs relate to normal conditions, you can see even over central Idaho that did receive moisture and ERCs dropped significantly, again approaching records for the time of year due to the warm and dry conditions recently. Further south across all of Nevada, Utah, and the Arizona Strip, ERCs remain at or above record levels for the time of year. 10-hour fuel moisture continues to drop across Nevada, Utah, and the Arizona Strip and is still very low over southern and eastern Idaho into Wyoming. Our satellite image from this morning shows an impulse moving into California. This will bring some cloud cover today to parts of western and northern areas of the Great Basin, but our stronger cold front will be approaching by this weekend and that will be the big weather maker for cooler temperatures, higher humidity, significant winds in some areas, and also some precipitation. So looking at later today, again, mainly just dry conditions, but with that, that cloud cover moving in, we will see that moisture up high to bring again some clouds to western northern areas. No high risk as winds will be in that moderate range over southern and western areas. So looking at the wind picture, you can see the areas in green are generally wind gusts in the 20s, only really just approaching 30 miles per hour along the Sierra front and over parts of eastern and southern Nevada into western Utah. This is also where relative humidity will remain in the single digits to low teens and even in the teens up further north into Idaho. On Friday, this area of low pressure initial, initially gets a little bit closer to the west coast, but again, the stronger cold fronts a little bit more to the northwest. So still possibly some cloud cover on Friday and some breezy winds, but no high risk issued. So on Friday, the gusty winds move into southern and central Utah with those gusts in the 20 to 30 mile per hour range and still remain breezy over western and northwest Nevada. Relative humidity really remains unchanged. The only exception will be over parts of central Idaho where the relative humidity may start to increase a little bit as that front nears later on Friday. Looking into Saturday, that cold front really pushes into the Pacific Northwest and this will push cloud cover and also again a stronger wind flow over much of the northern half of the Great Basin. So we do have high risk for winds over a large area of the northern half of Nevada and also into southern and eastern Idaho and Wyoming. Before that relative humidity increases, we will see those winds pick up and then we should see relative humidity really start to increase as we approach the evening. Right now it's looking like the best moisture will be up north over central and northern Idaho, bringing that precipitation. So looking at our wind gusts on Saturday, you can see the much stronger winds over the northern half of the Great Basin. The areas in the orange to pink are in that 35 to 45 mile per hour range. So we certainly could see some gusts above 45 miles per hour at times. But you can see the relative humidity will be increasing over central Idaho into northwest Nevada, but likely the winds will increase a little bit first before the, the RH really starts to improve. Further south and east, we will continue to see RH in the 15 to 20 percent range, but also with those stronger winds that will increase fire potential. 
forecast amounts of precipitation for the next three days. And again, this is mostly starting later on Saturday as that precipitation will move in during that time period. We will see the best chances for wetting rains and new high elevation snowfall over central and eastern Idaho into Wyoming. And then further south, you get into Nevada and Utah, much lighter precipitation. Um, the front has certainly been delayed a little bit and is weakened keeping much of that moisture more to the north so we're not expecting as much precipitation further south into utah and nevada and similarly we have continued that dry forecast over the southern half of the great basin as that will largely remain untouched by the showers as we move into sunday that front quickly sweeps, sweeps to the east we will have gusty northwest winds and where those winds combined with the low relative humidity is over southern areas of the Great Basin. So we still continued high risk for those gusty winds and dry conditions. But you can see how the fire potential modifies in the north by Sunday as we do see a significant drop in temperatures where highs will drop about 10 to 15 degrees or more over the northern half of the Great Basin going into, into later in the weekend. On Monday, we keep that general west to northwest flow We'll continue to see weak impulses move across the northern areas of the Great Basin, so we'll keep breezy winds across Idaho and Wyoming, and also some chances for showers early next week and also towards the middle of the week. Further south, again, just keeping dry conditions. So this will keep the significant fire potential low in the north as they continue to get impacted by shower activity. On Tuesday, again, another wave of moisture moves through the north with drier conditions in the south. And then on Wednesday, we start to see a ridge of high pressure build along the west coast. This will start pushing those systems off to the north and east, so we will see a drier, warmer period as we go later into next week, but still breezy winds over northern areas. Forecast amounts of precipitation for the seven days are indicated here, so we will see some wetting rains or higher elevation snowfall in the northern Wasatch, but again, further north is the better chances of wetting rain and anywhere close to the Idaho border. Looking at the 8 to 14 day outlook, taking us from October 15th through the 21st. Again, that ridge rebuilds after these fronts move through, so we will have warmer and drier conditions later in October. That concludes our webcast for today. Check back tomorrow for the latest updates.